Good morning, everyone, and welcome once more. Um, so, for this session, it's going to be, as she said, a bit stressful, but very interesting because most of us have fallen within that category before. I mean, you wake up one morning, or if you're driving and you get an automated call, and it tells you you've got some investment somewhere or something, and then trying to get your personal information. Definitely, that's a scam. So, for this session, we're going to prepare you on how to handle this stuff and what to do when you receive such messages. Now, bit of a disclaimer. No legal, this is not legal services. We are not providing legal advice. If you need special information, you need to consult your team. To handle this session, we have Desiree Hill. Um, she's a community protection specialist with the Border County District Attorney's Office. Okay? So, she's within the DS Communities Protection Division. She focuses typically on consumer protection and resolving issues between consumers and businesses and engages in educating the community on scams, fraud, and identity theft. She has experience in working with older adults, like you, people with disability, unemployment, and short benefits. So if a round of applause, can we welcome her? So she takes up. And please give her that attention to me. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Desiree, and I'm here to tell you about this fantastic new product. Um, it's called ScamWow. Uh, have you guys heard of it? Of course you have, because it's the latest, greatest, in 100% scam protection for everyone in the country. It's this little orange cloth right here. It's orange because you can see it, and the way it works is that you can just hide your phone right under it, and then no more scam calls. You can't see it. You lay it there, whatever. It also fits over your device. It can fit over some small computers as well. ScamWow is a great product to get, and um, for only... Uh, eight, 1995, you can get eight ScamWows to cover all of your devices in your home. It's not sold in stores, it's made someplace, I don't really know where, but beware of imitators. Um, you can always reach us at boco.org at ScamWow. Um, just FYI, disclaimer, doesn't really work unless like you have your phone on silent and it's covered up by the rag. Actually, this is a rag from my husband's uh, garage, so it doesn't really work in that. Um, it doesn't do 100% preventing of scams, but it would be great if we did have something like that, right? Yeah. Right? Okay, so how many of us have experienced a scam in our life? I think we all should be raising our hands, because I get them on the daily as well. Um, so, like the intro, uh, my name is Desiree Furley, and I'm the Community Protection Specialist with the Office of the District Attorney here in Boulder County. I work specifically in the Community Protection Division. How many of you have, have, have you heard of Community Protection? Some of you. Do you have handouts? I do have handouts. They're in the back, along with stress balls, because sometimes my presentation can be a little bit stressful. Um, in community protection, we really focus on four things. The first is that we work closely with consumers to help resolve a consumer-related dispute. The second thing is that we investigate complaints and, and, and prosecute cases involving at-risk communities. So those could be our immigrant community, people with disabilities, and also older adults. We also like to provide a lot of information and resources to community members about what's really available and also the process steps for a lot of things that go unreported most times. So we really like to educate. And finally, it's about community engagement. So I was telling um, someone over here that really my office expects me to be out in the community pretty much 80% of my time. So I have a small cubicle in my office, or as my office. So, I want us to think back about how we all communicated 20 years ago. What were the ways that we communicated? Telephone. Telephone. What else? Individual. Individual. One on one. What else? Yeah. Mail. Mail. Email. E email. 20 years ago? Yeah. yeah. Email was around then. Pagers. Okay. What was that? Pagers. Pagers. Yes. All right. Now think of today. How do we communicate with other people? Text message, emails, what else? One-on-one. One-on-one, -on -one. that still exists. Online. Online, mail, Apple Watches, the um, 
Well, I don't want to say it, but the Alexa. Um, Siri. The what? Siri. Siri, yes. Don't say it too loud. Um, but if you think about it, the way we communicate it has changed greatly. And the scammers know this. They know this because they are also utilizing that same technology. So when, we, when you think about today's presentation, think about those ways you communicate. Because I guarantee you the scammers are going to try to use that against you to have you fall for a scam. So we have all those devices and phones. They're using those. Also, when they get in contact with you, they're going to present a problem or require some kind of response from you. How many of us have gotten that email saying that our credit card or a bank has been charged $495.77? Yes, so have I. Um, and they'll always demand immediate action from you. And then they'll also tell you, don't tell anyone that this is happening. Um, we see this a lot with the jury duty scam that comes through Boulder County, where someone pretends to be uh, one of the sheriff's deputies and says, you missed jury duty. There is a warrant out for your arrest, unless you pay us $5,000. And the way you do that is you get money out of your bank and you go to that cryptocurrency ATM at the liquor store and you exchange the money and then take photos of the receipts and send it to them. But there are some things that you can do. So scam wow is not totally incorrect, but don't pick up is one of the, one of the top things that we tell people from our office. Don't pick up, especially if it's a number that you are not aware of. And if it's important, the person should be leaving a message. Also, if you do pick up and you realize that this person doesn't know what they're talking about, they don't know you, they're asking for a lot of information from you, hang up. Gone are the days where we need to have a conversation with folks over the phone. We can just hang up. You can even feign that your internet went out or your phone just broke all of a sudden. Um, also deleting all those emails that you don't even know where they're coming from. The one problem with emails is, is that uh, companies like Gmail and Outlook you can't easily see the, web, the, the email address that it's coming from. Usually you have to tap on it, but sometimes it's kind of scary to tap on it, or then you have to tap on it and then tap on again if you're using an Apple phone or an Android. And then you can't easily see the email address. But if you don't recognize it, just delete it. And then how many of us go around daily and we, we just want to hand out money to anonymous people? <laughs> don't we all? <laughs> Because that's really what, what scammers are asking for, for you to trust them, an anonymous person, and just hand over $5,000 or $500. And the one thing I can't stress enough is if you do come across a scam or you give money to someone and you're just not quite sure, talk to someone. Talk to your friends, talk to your neighbors, talk to um, loved ones. And if you can't find anyone to talk to because no one's picking up their phone, because I gave them this presentation to not pick up their phone for any call, then call me. That's what our office is for. We um, are more than happy to look over emails, look at text messages, and find out is this legit or not. And then to also help you report it, if it is a scam. On the way to call you. Um, is it on then? It's, I think it's on the last page, but it might be small. But if you pick up our stress ball, <laughs> or our, um, our pens back there, I have it. Um, also, I'll have it on the screen later. So, I like to give this up front because I feel like what, sometimes when people call our office, they want to report the scam, but sometimes I feel like folks don't really want to tell me if they lost money on it. Because there's a lot of shame in that. Um, because people believe that they, they're stupid or that maybe they don't want to uh, make it appear that they might have cognition issues. But the thing about scams is that it's happening to everyone. And it really doesn't matter education level, income level, um, your life experience. There's different scams for different types of people. And these scammers know it. Um, actually, there's a lot of research and development in scams these days where they're testing out new scams for different communities. So just know that. But one of the things, um, if you do give money, is to contact your financial institution immediately to see if there are any remedies that they can do. So if you paid by credit card, contact your credit card. If you pay through your bank, contact your bank to see if they can stop uh, moving the money around. Um, and then contacting law enforcement to put in that report. And these steps need to be done immediately after once you figure out that it's a scam. If it's six months down the road or two years later, 
that's a little bit harder, and more than likely the money can't be recovered. And then lastly, to file a report with the Federal Trade Commission. Federal Trade Commission is kind of that clearinghouse taking in all those reports. Because in 2023, 5 point million reports were made. Now that jumped from 2.4 million in 2022. And I guarantee you, this year, it's way above 5.4. And the total amount of losses in 2022 was 8.8 .8 billion. In 2023, it was 10 billion. So these numbers are staggering. The top three scams reported to the Federal Trade Commission are definitely identity theft, um, imposter scams, so those are the typical scams that we all see, um, and also credit bureaus, info furnishers, and reporter users. So I'd like to give some examples. Have any of you ever seen these come through on your text message phone if you have a, a smartphone? Yep, so your, your bank card was charged $477.99, or that was it offering you a job that just sounds too good to be true? Yeah, so this one for the job actually came through our office where a gentleman, he was working in construction and he was older, he needed to switch jobs. He still needed to make income, and this text message came at the most appropriate time when he was thinking about this. And he was like, wow, that's great. So he responded back. They were asking for all of his information, his full name, mailing address, um, his email, the make and model of his car, the front and back pictures of his driver's license, his driver's license number. Um, and he sent that over. And all he had to do was drive around in his car with a Red Bull emblem. So he kind of got suspicious after a while once he got a certified letter with um, some instructions inside of it plus a check for almost $5,000. The job was only supposed to be $400 a week. So he brought it to our office, and um, I took a look at it, and it looked kind of strange. Um, and it, what it was tending to look like, it was a job scam, where he would be moving around money, or he would deposit the money into his own bank account, and then um, he would have to give back money to the scammer. And so it was kind of like a bait and switch in a way where he would be giving his real money, but then accepting the fake money from this fake company. So I took the check and I still have it to this day. Um, and he asked, well, what if they want the check back? And I told him, then you tell them to come contact me because uh, then I'm more than willing to meet with them in our office and have them come pick up that check. Mm -hmm. What about this one, Geek Squad? Yes. Geek mm -hmm. Squad or PayPal. Okay, that was a big one, right? These ones come through email. Again, it's the same scenario where um, they're kind of alerting you that some kind of purchase was made to your credit card or bank uh, uh, card, and that um, it kind of scares you because you're like, I didn't budget for that. I'm not purchasing that. Has someone stole my identity? Has someone stole my bank card? Why is this happening? So some of the um, tips that you can do is really look at where the email is coming from. I guarantee you, with these types of emails, if they're coming from a Gmail, ProtonMail, Hotmail, Outlook, that's not a company, that's not Geek Squad, and that's not PayPal. That is a scam email. That someone is using another person's email or created an email and starts sending these out in the hopes <coughs> that you will call them. The other, um, type of scam that happens, and maybe some of us have seen this, are the tech support scams. Have anyone, I saw one hand, uh, anyone experienced the tech support scam? Pop up, you're on, you do a web search, you go onto some website that you've never been on before, and it scares you with this big blue Windows Defender alert saying that um, something has happened to your computer and you're at risk for a virus, right? So I actually got this one on a computer at home. And let me tell you, I talk about this as a living, and it still scared me. I got so scared that I'm like, what do I do? And I had to check myself. Um, and then I was able to get rid of it. But know that your computer most times has a antivirus software, a firewall, to help protect your information and your computer. So I was able to increase the level of security on my computer, and that no longer pops up. Take up. Yeah. You get a Microsoft one. 
to one every other day. And I said, don't call that number, but look up the number for Microsoft. So That's we true. Did, and we called them. And they didn't feel a lot more honest than the scam. <laughs> like, you went online, you looked at their number, you said, yes, it wasn't the number on the screen, but they wanted all kinds of information. So, so we didn't give it, we just hung up. One thing to note, too, that when you go online and you, you're searching for, like, Windows to see if this is true or not, uh, just know that those first three to five responses in your search history are usually advertisements, paid advertisements. So you really have to look at where you're going online and make sure it's uh, Microsoft.com as opposed to Microsoft.B-A-R-G-A-I-N. You know, you never know. I had one where the... Um number online matched mm -hmm. the number I was getting on the phone. Mm -hmm. and it, was, it was like from Dow and my thing. I just hung up, but I don't know how they do that, but they, when, yeah. it's the number that's calling you was also the number that was listed online. Unfortunately, there's a lot of spoofing of phone numbers. I heard that sometimes the scammers are spoofing the Boulder County government number, too, because mm -hmm. we're um, VoIP phones. We no longer have landline phones. I asked our IT security guy, like, how do we prevent this? And he said, we can all just go back to landline phones. <laughs> and then that never happened. We're still um, using voice over internet uh, phones. I know, some of this is kind of hard, right? Because we... How do you know when it's a real pop-up from your... It won't ever be a pop-up like that. Um, unless you run, like, a virus scan on your computer you, through You're your own software. Manually scanning it. Yep. Then Microsoft is not looking at your computer 24-7. Um, they just offer you the software that's built into the computer, and you as a consumer needs, need to utilize it. So Microsoft will never reach out to you. I know they're using the logo, it looks scary, but uh, they're not going to be calling you. They're reaching out to you in hopes that you call that number and um, talk to them, and they can get you into their scam. But it's not just online, right? How many of us have gotten those car warranty um, letters or home warranty letters? Yeah, yeah, it happens there. Um, does anyone know what is located at 455 North Burlington Avenue in Lafayette, Colorado? No? No one here from Josephine Commons? It's a senior housing site um, in, in Lafayette, Colorado. And one day, all of their residents started getting this uh, postcard. And it was asking for, let's see, I want to say it was home warranties. They were offering home warranties for all the residents there. But all the residents don't even own the property. That's Boulder County. Boulder County owns the property. So they were really targeting the wrong people. Also, sometimes uh, scammers will offer benefit information. So this letter right here, what it says at the top is that it's uh, benefit information for Colorado citizens in 2022. Mm -hmm. So I believe that they're offering, um, let's see, postage, pay cards, a free Walmart gift card if you just supply your information. So you may or may not get that gift card, that's great. But then when you look a little bit closer at, at the bottom, at the fine print that you can't even read on the screen here, it says that it's not even related to anything government. It's more than likely like a um, customer building, and call, uh, you're making yourself available for telemarketers to reach out and offer loans. Um, sometimes they come in the form of what look like from Boulder County. Uh, this one right here is a, a notice of tax lien for $15,000. So the person who got this was like, what is this? Why am I getting this? And they connected with me. When I looked at it, I automatically knew that this was not coming from Boulder County. Because first off, um, this is not the Boulder County logo. Boulder County logo is green and white, has mountains and pine trees. And then also the information where they're sending them is not a county number or county websites. So I had to explain to him that that's not what the information is. Again, benefit information that comes through. This one, you can kind of see it right here, um, that the information, that they're not affiliated with any kind of government agency but they're offering up 100% um, of all final expenses up to 35,000, which is technically, I think, what they're offering is a loan. Now, how many of you get an annual request for a donation 
from an organization that supports police or public safety? Yes. Do we have any people in here that donate? <laughs> I was going to say, you don't have to raise your hand if that's the case. Um, so there's an organization called National Police Association. Maybe some of you have gotten this. Um, they are a real organization. They're based out of Texas. Um, but when you pull up their tax information, which is public because they're a nonprofit organization, less than 2% of the money that they receive actually goes to any um, public safety entity. Um, and I guarantee you probably 0% goes to anywhere here in Boulder County. Um, so you can donate there. Your money is going to an organization. And I include it with scams mostly because um, it's just about educating yourselves about where you're donating money to. I see a question right there. We get a lot of phone calls yeah. asking for support for, yeah. the for the police department. And they say I'm scared. They are not, so from what I understand, from all. We don't give over the phone. Yeah, that's good. Um, I usually say I don't give to anyone who's not family. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. What I understand from all the law enforcement agencies here in Boulder County, none of them will ever call you to get a donation. The only time that um, a public safety entity will ask for a donation are when they have those hunky like fire department guys with the boots at like a stop sign. That's pretty much it. Yeah. So confidence scams. Have you all heard of confidence scams before? like romance scams oh, or investment no. scams. So I'm gonna to speak to romance scams a little bit more, but I hate romance scams because they last a long time. And the people that they focus on get really invested into the romance scam. And it's not something where you just get that one phone call and then that's it, and you, you, you do or you do not give the money to the person. They'll keep calling. And the way it works is that they'll call you in the morning, when you wake up, they'll call you in the afternoon, They'll call you before you go to bed. They know your schedule. And that they'll call you, tell you those sweet nothings, tell you that they can't come see you because they're stuck in an oil rig off the, oh. off the Mexico, uh, Gulf of Mexico. Or maybe they're a doctor working for the US Army in Germany. Or they're stationed you know, for somewhere else in the world. But there's always a reason why they can't see you. They create this big, elaborate story. And they'll even give you these tragic situations where they need help. And that help usually comes in the form of your money. Um, you may pay for a plane ticket to come, for them to come and see you. Um, and so over time, that just happens. And what's sad is the story of someone handing over all of their savings, all of their money to someone that they love and trust, and that is a scammer, and then they lose their housing because they can no longer pay for it, is pretty common. And it's so sad to see, and I, I really hate romance scams. Similarly are investment scams. Um, pig butchering is something that happens in investment scams where you get a call, or sorry, a text message from someone where it just says, hey, Paul, this is Denise. Uh, we met at Jim's party the other day. I mean, do, do any of you get those kind of text messages where it's just random, seems like a real person? I do, for some reason. Maybe it's because I do this job. Uh, I do, where it's just like a hello. And then my initial reaction is be like, you got the wrong number. But then I'm on the hook at that point. I'm engaging. The person on the other end knows that there's a human being who will type out a message on this side of the phone. So one of the things that happens is sometimes investment scams, uh, pig butchering scams start out that way, where you get that text message, you respond, and all of a sudden, you're just texting back and forth. Things kind of like the romance scam, like how was your day? What do you do? And it goes so far that um, the, the person, the scammer on the other end, doesn't even need to tell you um, how to get involved with the scam. You ask, because they have already shared that they are a fantastic in, uh, investor and that you ask, hey, I have some money on the side. Can I invest with you? And they do that so slyly. And I wish all these scammers would become therapists because they would excel at it as opposed to being uh, scammers. Um, I actually have here from the SEC, uh, sorry, I'm blanking on your name. Right. Ryan, so, Ryan Butters. So um, I'm just gonna take, I'm gonna steal a couple minutes from yes. Desiree. 
Uh, so my name is Ryan Butters. I am the Outreach Specialist for the United States Securities and Exchange Commission here in Colorado and the seven surrounding states. Um, and confidence scams, in particular investment scams, it's something that we're seeing, it's epidemic. We're seeing it more and more often every year. And one thing I'd like to add on to the great information that Desiree has provided is that an element of the confidence scam with investments is something that seems to happen more often than not. And it is, even if you are hesitant, let's say that you've established some sort of a friendship with somebody, usually online, and but you're, you're smart about the danger of being asked for money. So how they increasingly get around this roadblock for them is they will offer to invest for you. They will offer to, to sometimes give, sometimes loan, thousands of dollars to seed an account, in an investment account. So what they're doing is they are establishing a sense of obligation on your part. And if somebody comes to you and says, after you've established a relationship with them, and you might even consider them to be a, an online friend, and they say, I really like you. I, I want to help you. I've made so much money with my own investments. I want to give you $5,000 so that we can do this together. You can pay me back later if you want, but this is money that I really, I, I like you. I want, I want us to do this together. Well, often what's going to happen is that money is fictional money. The website that they have you investing in is a fictional website. So you'll log in. You'll see that you have $5,000 invested. You'll see that it starts rising. And you think, this person has really done me a, a, a solid. This person is, in fact, a good, this is a good friend. They, they've set me up for success. Oftentimes, somebody will see twenty, thirty, forty, a hundred thousand dollars in their account based on this initial investment. This is where they get you. They say you might even be feeling a little bit of. This is a perfect example of if, if it seems too good to be true, it probably is, right? So they'll say, "Why don't you try to take some money out? Maybe try to take out the amount that I loaned you, five thousand dollars. If they." If you can take the money out, then you've seen it's legitimate. They'll let you take the money. Suddenly you've got $5,000 in, in your account, in your own bank account. So everything's kind of square, right? Everything else is profit. What they're trying to do is they're trying to trick you into, uh, they're trying to lower your, your sense of suspicion, and they're trying to encourage you to invest more of your own money. And oftentimes, this is when it becomes a twenty, thirty, fifty thousand dollar investment on your part, or your part, or emptying a four hundred one k, for instance. Uh, so you're now sunk. You've now sunk a hundred thousand dollars into this fictional account, and when you try to take any additional money out, that money's already gone. And uh, so just be aware that a, a very common component of investment confidence scams is uh, the the gift of money and and then the likelihood that they're going to let you pull a little bit out and when you pull that money out it seems real it seems legitimate the money's real but the the trick is still there it's just a part it's a chapter of the scam if that makes sense so just just be aware it's uh it's sophisticated as desiree was saying these people do they a b test these scams they're professionals. The people that do this, this is their job. Make no mistake, these people are very sophisticated. They can be very persuasive. So we should always, especially if we, if we encounter an, a, a, uh, a scheme or a money-making opportunity that is brought to our attention, we didn't seek it out, our, our internal alarm bells should always be ringing because these people can portray themselves in a light that makes it really difficult to do, to distrust them. Um, and we see that every day. Every day we see people that they've been, they've been roped along for six months. Yep. And then suddenly the trap is, is closed around them. Um, and the money is long, long gone. So hopefully that's a little bit helpful. Thank you. Yeah. I'm glad he was here, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I was just on a meeting with the Better Business Bureau and they highlighted online shopping 
as being one of the main complaints that they have from folks. Um, has anyone ever seen this cute kitty couch here? It looks, looks adorable. I want to buy one. Um, it's actually AI generated. There's a lot of AI out there. Um, this is the best example I can give you is this kitty couch where people were purchasing it and it never came to. Um, when you look a little bit closer, you can tell that it is a uh, AI generated because it just doesn't make sense. Um, but a lot of people ordered it. Sometimes when you're ordering from online shops that you're not really aware of, you might get the product, but it might be like this big for a sofa, or you might not get it. And then that company will have your, your credit card or your debit card information. Another thing that we're seeing a lot with online shopping is through social media uh, marketplaces like Facebook, where you, you have celebrities endorsing a product. Like um, this one with Taylor Swift, I believe she's promoting Le Creuset uh, cookware. And when you listen to the video, because it's actually a video, it's her voice saying that we have so many new Le Creuset uh, pots and pans available to you all for extremely discounted prices. Give us a call. Um, but that's all AI generated. So even when you're shopping online, you're looking for a place to get a product, you just need to be aware of where you're shopping at and look at all the fine details, like um, do they offer refunds and returns? Um, is there contact information? Do they have a customer support line? I, I kind of get suspicious when a company has the USD symbol next to it and the American flag, just because I, I don't know where I'm ordering from. Usually when you order from an American company, you don't have the USD, but you know a lot of times businesses are just shipping across the world, because that's how it is these days but definitely paying attention to where you're buying things. Now, how many of you remember back in early 2000s, even as far back as the 90s, when you would go to a department store and you would go all the way to the back of the department store because all the signs that say 75% off, 80% off were turned the other way? Is it just me? Was I, was I, am I the only bargain shopper here? Because long gone are the days of having 75% off, 85% off for a lot of products. Um, so if you do see something being sold for 55% off or more, be cautious. Because it might be a scam shop online, and it, you, might, you might get the product, but it might be some chintzy product, or you might not get the product. Or it's fine, and I'm just a really suspicious person because of my job, and I get the product. Um, also pay attention to website design and um, any kind of sloppy English. Um, let's see, anything outside of .com, look a little bit closer at it. If it's .bargain or .app, um, look closer at the website. If a, a company wants you to download software to ac access their shop, that's a clear red flag. You don't want to be downloading anything to your computer or any of your devices. Or, of course, if they want you to pay by wire transfer, a gift card that is outside of their business, um, or money order. So we already went over this. Some things you can do is just don't pick up those phone calls that you don't know. Hang up if you realize that it is a scam. Delete those emails that are coming from people that you know or trusted businesses. Don't pay that anonymous person. Um, and talk to someone. Just know that you're not alone in this. Um, I believe Recovery Cafe here in Longmont has some great support uh, or peer support programs because a lot of people are experiencing this. And just know that you're not the only one if you get that call or if you fall for that call. So some do's and don'ts. Be aware that there are people out in the world that want to separate you from your hard-earned money and retirement savings. They also want to separate you from your personal information. Um, just know that anything that goes on the internet stays on the internet. So this goes for posting on social media too. Um, anything that's on, or anything that goes through an online system will run the risk of being breached. So it includes like healthcare information, um, information through social media, you know, think about all the different accounts that you have. And with all those accounts, change your passwords frequently. Can anyone give me the definition of frequently? <laughs> Daily? Daily? Oh my god, no. <laughs> I guess that is. Um, frequently is however you define it, however it makes sense for you. 
Um, now, sometimes I get asked of like, well, there's those password programs that keep all the passwords in one application and it's easy to use. Which one should I go with, Desiree? What I will tell you is to do your research. Look at what's out there um, and you can make that decision on your own. Sometimes some of our, our own smart, smartphones have that service for us, but just know, again, anything that's connected or on the internet can be breached. It's kind of scary, right? Um, let's see, question the legitimacy of all the information that you're receiving. Um, check your credit report at least once a year. Better yet, put a credit freeze on your credit report. Right now, um, annualcreditreport.com is offering credit reports free of charge once a week. That's good and bad. That shows that, wow, that's great. They're offering it for free and it's bad because there's so much fraud happening out in the world. Annual credit report. Website annualcreditreport.com. Um, check your bank and credit card statements frequently. Frequently, definition, however you define it. Um, just because sometimes the scammers already have your credit information, they're just taking out small amounts of money, 10 cents, 7 cents, $1.35, $5.36 cents, to see if you're really paying attention. So you want to make sure to uh, check that. Um, I've been hearing, hearing a lot of grandparent scams lately, and that um, one thing I suggested to folks is that we almost need to go back to a safe word. If you go back to your, your family and talk, to about, talk about safe words, so that if you do get a call from someone that says they're related to you and they got your car accident and they need $10,000 for bond or $10,000 for some program that they're taken to court with, but you're not quite sure if it's really your, your family member, ask them, what is my safe word? Most times the scammer will just hang up because they know that they can't provide that. Um, also, some don'ts. Don't blindly accept that anonymous person is who's, who they say they are. It goes to grandparent scams. Don't download any apps or programs. If someone reaches out to you and says, I need you to download Telegram, or I need you to download Desktop Viewer, just don't do it. Um, don't give uh, your device access to anyone who reaches out to you. Sometimes they'll try to send you codes and ask for that code back. That code is not meant for anyone else except you. Um, don't send, well we said talk about this, don't send money to an anonymous person. Um, don't think that you're alone in experiencing this. This is happening to more than just older adults. It's happening to um, young adults, it's happening to people in their 20s, 30s, 40s, it's happening to everyone. Unfortunately with COVID, since we were all stuck in our homes, scammers took advantage of us because they knew that we were isolated. And that's one of the tools that they use is isolation. So if you do become a victim, I can't stress enough to contact your financial institution first and then contact the law enforcement. Sometimes law enforcement will tell you, one, you need to report it to the Federal Trade Commission and then they'll give you my name and number especially here in Boulder County. Um, and then you're going to want to report it to the FTC, but if you forget any of these steps, you can always give our office a call. It's myself and a few um, volunteers that pick up those calls. Um, if you get the voicemail, please leave a voicemail. We do try to get back to calls at least within 24 hours. Or one business day. You said you'd get to later. Yeah. Is, is later now? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's it. 303-441-3700. That's the general number to the district attorney's office. I'm also going to give you a second number. You can give me a call by direct extension too. But there's lots of good work that's going on in the world. Um, I think one question that I had from uh, someone who attended my presentation is I'm like, well, what is going on? Is anyone actually taking care of this? And I'm like, there's a lot. The Federal Trade Commission, the SEC, the FBI, even down to our local agencies here in the state, we're all working together to try to catch all these scammers. So there's a lot of good work going on. And so whoever took a stress ball here, let's take a time to just de-stress a bit. Because this is Marlo. Marlo is not yet two. Um, 
He was raised by, and trained by Kenan Kim Haddians for independence out in California. Um, he has a very strong nudge control because he was trained to support people who are blind. Uh, but he decided to switch it up and he joined the criminal justice field. Um, so the things that he does is that he comforts victims, witnesses, and even staff, which is great because I have a canine coworker. Um, and he's also convinced that everyone is his best friend. So this is him coming out of his training, and this is him now. Aww. So he's a good boy. He's actually, um, the, his owner is uh, Christopher Merkel, who is one of our investigators at the district attorney's office, and he's great to have around. Um, I always hate going in the afternoon to the investigator's office because Marla's always trying to take a nap, and I feel like I'm impeding on that. Aww. So hopefully that will de-stress you from this presentation a little bit. But I just want to say thank you. My name is Desiree. I'm with the Community Protection Division, and we'll open it up for questions. Yeah. We were scammed, and we were told that we should change our telephone number because they'll call again. Is that wise? I mean, we've had this number since, you know, yeah, forever. Is it a landline or cell phone? Cell phone. Cell phone? Okay. So you can, but what are the chances that you get someone? someone else's old number that gets just as many calls. It could be okay. It's like a brand new number. I don't know how the banks work. Or sorry, not banks, uh, the phones work. If they like have these whole set of new numbers that are magical and no one knows about, or if they recycle the numbers. So let no like, opt out anymore. Um, are you talking about like the do not call list? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the do not call list, the federal, and then also the local Colorado do not call list, great, sign up for them. Telemarketers will not call you if you're on the list. Well, they don't Well, scammers don't, don't pay attention to them because they're not telemarketers. They're, they're telemarketers, that's what they are. So it's kind of up to you if you feel like that's the best choice for you. Um, I can tell you, I have a phone from the office, and there's a guy named George that keeps getting text messages that are scams. And so that's where I pull a lot of my content from. Because <laughs> there's a George out there that's getting a lot of scam calls and text messages, but I have the phone now. Any other questions? Yeah? Do you have a counterpart in Broomfield? So um, if people call me from outside of Boulder County, I tell them to contact their local district attorney's office because most DA offices have a consumer protection unit. And so you can always contact the Broomfield DA to find out who that is. Yeah? Not a question, but two things that happened to us. We had somebody uh, on the phone say, we have a package, it was from UPS, mm -hmm. we have a package and we, have, we can't deliver it because we have the wrong address. Mm -hmm. And so we went in person over to UPS and mm -hmm. she said, no, yep. you don't have a package you know, and trying to get our, our information. And then the next one, we had, we bought a um, mattress, and right before it was delivered, we got a, a thing, we need your address because the one we have is incorrect. Mm -hmm. And when the delivery guys got there, we didn't, I didn't answer it. They oh. said, no, we don't send out things like that. And I thought, how did they mm -hmm. even know? That was sort of scary. Sometimes there are people who work for businesses yeah. that maybe take that information and do what they will with it. Yeah. Like if those are referred to like innies yeah. sometimes. So that could have been a situation. But I'm glad to hear that you physically went to UPS yeah. and asked that question. Yeah. So whenever you get a call or experience something where you're not sure if it's a real business, get the legitimate information. If it's your bank, get your card out, turn it over, call that number on the back. Don't go with the information that, that they're giving you. Um, and that so actually great. speaks to a really important point that I'd like to make. Mm -hmm. That a, a, universe, a pretty universal aspect to fraud in general, certainly investment fraud, but um, almost every type of fraud that Desiree was discussing today, is there's going to be at some point pressure. At some point there's going to be a time limit. At some point they're, they're going to need you to make a decision. And, and what that is, in, the, the intent there is to deny you the ability to conduct your own due diligence. When they need your money, and they need it right now, and you can't wait till tomorrow, they're trying to make sure that you don't have enough time to do a simple Google search or call some numbers back, 
uh, they're call trying me. to, or, or call Desiree, or call me. Um, and as a matter of fact, if anybody has any any uh, questions about potential securities fraud, I can give you our number, the Denver office of the SEC, and that's 303-844-1000. And again, because I see some of you are, are opening notebooks, 303-844-1000. And that is our, that's the line to our receptionist, again, at the Denver, for? I'm sorry? What is that number is for? That's for the United States Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC, and in specific the Denver Regional Office. So we do have an office in downtown Denver, and we're responsible for Colorado and the couple of states that surround Colorado. And if anybody has any uh, questions about investment offers that they have that you have received, or you believe that you may be in the process of being defrauded. Uh, we absolutely encourage you to reach out. And just like Desiree, if she receives a contact uh, at the DA's, DA's office, we can take a look at um, what information you've been given. We, uh, we, can, we can make an initial sort of assessment. Um, we can walk you through a complaint process or if it's appropriate to put you in, in touch with other agencies, uh, whether it be a state regulator for securities or a district attorney's office or the attorney general's office, we can we can help facilitate that. Yes. Well, the th the thing of it is, is that the catch twenty two for everybody here is we're supposed to hang up on numbers we don't recognize, and nine times out of ten, you won't get that identifier. Right. Right. It, it's even it's, from the government. Right. It's it's complex. I completely understand. Like, I have a government cell phone and sometimes I need to make calls out my government issued smartphone does not identify me as a United States government phone number because it's just a Colorado phone number so you're right and it's like that with a lot of agencies and, and a lot of companies you don't necessarily you don't necessarily know that's the complexity with all of this there's no there's no easy answer there's no simple solution to combating fraud. It's, it involves general awareness, it involves um, hesitation if we don't recognize, or if somebody contacted us and we did not reach out to them first. It's, uh, it requires us to be diligent, and it's not easy. Um, we absolutely recognize that when we're asking an audience to not respond to calls that they don't recognize, that is not quite as simple in practice, as so it is So you leave a message? Yes, I mean... I mean, that's, that's what I mean. We hang up on you. Yes. We leave a message yes. the DA, you know, or... Right, yeah. right. So please call us back, or... Yes. Can leave a message. Well, yeah. that's true. <laughs> I, it, for almost any of these points, there is a slippery way that a fraudster can make themselves appear more legitimate than... I mean, they're not legitimate, but it, yeah. My it, safe word's hot wings. Just <laughs> Just mention all wings, and you're good. <laughs> but but I would I would say yes. Um, I've been running into a problem with the people from medical offices call and say remember your appointment, whatever. But they're using their own personal phone. Oh, yes. And so it's like cancer. <coughs> right. So I don't answer. This. Right. And I've told the medical offices that so they have one phone and they can use it right. for these calls. Yeah, best practice would suggest that you have an office phone that can identify you as a caller from the office. But in this day and age, it's not, people just don't do that far too often. And it, it makes it so complicated to, to really, it's a great, it, all of this is a great area. And it's uh, it's part of the reason why we really do encourage, and I'm sure this is the case with Desiree in the DA's office, if, you, if you're concerned about something that is being presented to you, reach out. We, we are here to, to help you make at least an initial assessment. And on that note, you know, we want to make time for the next presenters. So we are available in the resource room, just on the other side of this wall. Um, if you'd like to talk, to talk to us further about any kind of issues regarding investments or with consumer protection. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.